Hey guys, it's Alex. I've been getting a lot of questions on how to mitigate reverb, so I wanted to jump on real quick and give you a couple of thoughts that might help out your recordings. Reverb is simply sound waves reflecting off of surfaces around the sound source. So it can really be anything. You can be in a room and your voice will reflect off the walls or the floor or the ceiling around you. If you're out in a forest, you get that kind of nice lush exterior reverb that's really pleasant. You can even sound like you're at the Grand Canyon and it's just this echoey, crazy, you know, 20 second long reverb tail that comes back to you after a few seconds. Now used in post-production, reverb can actually be really, really helpful in layering ADR or voiceover into a scene to make it sound a little bit more like it was production or immersing the audience into a space that they wouldn't otherwise be connected with. But uncontrolled during the recording process, it can make everything sound really terrible and muddy and it's just really challenging to get things right and intelligible. And the long and short of it is that there's really not a whole lot you can do after the fact if you've got reverb in your recordings that you didn't account for why you were capturing them. So given how limited your choices are in mitigating reverb after you've recorded something, it's really important to consider the space that you're recording in and the microphone that you're using. If you're outdoors, I'd highly recommend using something like a shotgun mic. I mean, there's always the Sennheiser 416 that's kind of a standard on film sets. Rode makes the NTG3 that is usually called the poor man's 416 even though it's only like a hundred dollars cheaper it's kind of ridiculous uh the really really great ones it's, uh neumann makes the kmr 81 which is a fantastic sounding microphone just a little less durable than the previous and then of course sheps is kind of the top tier in my opinion with its cmit series but those are astronomically expensive and kind of only attainable if you're really a production sound mixer. However, there are plenty of different microphones that you can get with the right pickup pattern, being a shotgun or a hypercardioid for outside, and you want to get those microphones anywhere between three and five feet away maximum from your sound source to capture what it is that you're recording and mitigate any of the background elements that you don't want. For indoors, a lot of people think that you'd want to use a shotgun microphone, but because of the nature of the pickup pattern, you actually want to go for more of a super cardioid or just a standard cardioid. Uh, the shotgun pattern actually, it's almost like it amplifies all the problems of the room by focusing them into a single point. So it's great for outdoors, but when you're in an enclosed space, you want a little bit of a wider pickup, so it's a little more natural sounding. That's why you'll see a lot of production mixers or boom operators switch over to something more like a Sennheiser 8050 or a Shep CMC6 with the MK41 capsule on it. And again, you wanna be maybe a maximum of three to five feet away with those microphones in that situation, cause anything else you're gonna get a lot more contamination from the room. That's why, because I'm in an interior space, I've selected a microphone with a cardioid pickup pattern so it's rejecting a lot of the reflections that are coming from behind the camera. I've got it about a foot away from me, pointed into my chest, so I'm not getting as many direct mouth noises and I'm getting the resonance in my voice from kind of where the source is. And again, because of the pickup pattern, it doesn't do that weird kind of concentration of problems at the focal point of the microphone. It's sort of... It almost allows the room to breathe a little bit, and that's not quite how it works scientifically, but in practice, that's kind of how it sounds. Now, there are plenty of situations where you can't get a microphone into the optimal spot, whether it's dialogue recording or sound effects recording, you know, theatrical productions where you're on a stage and have people running around. That's where lav mics come into play. And I'm actually wearing one right now so you can hear kind of the differences between that. You can tell it picks up a little bit of the room because it's got an omnidirectional pickup pattern. And so it's going to capture everything around it, whether it's from over here or behind me or up or down or whatever. That makes it great for recording the voice because if I move my my head, I can talk this way, or I can talk this way, I can go up here and do whatever, and it's not really going to change how it sounds very much. Whereas if a cardioid microphone has the same thing happen, I can go off axis like this, and this microphone isn't going to sound very good from over here. Whereas the lav mic is going to stay totally the same. Lavalier microphone techniques is kind of a whole dark art unto itself, and if you guys are curious, I'd love to do a whole series of videos on that, both for dialogue and for sound effects recording, because they're two sort of different worlds. But the point is, when you can't get a more optimal microphone into place, lavaliers are a fantastic choice to get the coverage that you need without necessarily sacrificing a lot of quality. Speaking of sacrificing quality, the last thing that you ever want to do is use onboard camera audio because it sounds like this and it's absolutely terrible. I cannot use this. There's no way to salvage it and it just sort of is what it is. As I've mentioned before, the source quality rule. If you start with something good, you're gonna be able to make it great. If you start with something from the onboard camera microphones, it's only gonna ever sound terrible. And I can do a little bit of processing like this to try and get it sounding 
better, but it's only ever going to be marginally improved over the horror that onboard camera audio is. Whereas if I just use this microphone in front of me, it's going to sound fantastic. Or even if I use the lav that's under my shirt here, both of those are going to sound way better than any onboard audio from a camera ever could. So long story short, there's really not a good way to fix reverb after it's already been recorded. And that's why it's so important to get it right during the recording process through proper mic choices and really paying attention to your environment, finding the least reverberant space to record in that you can. But keep in mind, having a little bit of reverb isn't necessarily a bad thing. For sound effects, when you layer them in against the rest of a scene, it actually lends some perspective that's a little bit more immersive to the audience. For dialogue, it sounds more natural, like that character is actually in the street atmosphere they're in, or the room that they're standing in, or whatever. And it's one of the most important components in matching ADR or voiceover to the rest of a scene when an actor has to record their lines over. Without reverb, it just sounds like the actor is right up on top of a microphone like this, and that doesn't sound anything like the rest of the dialogue that was recorded. So hopefully this video shapes your perspective on reverb a little bit, when you don't want it and what to do about it, and when you might actually want a little bit in your recordings. If you want a little bit more info on any of the gear that I talked about in this video, check out the kit link below. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, come follow me over on Instagram at AXK, and thanks for watching.